Hey everybody, this is a supplement to the Aegean reading, and it doesn't mean don't read it, it just means that um, I wanted to show you more images and give you a better idea about Aegean culture. And they what, what Aegean culture and civilization means were a bunch of different people living in this area of the Aegean, which is this whole area here, but they were not living in an isolated area. This is, these are the Greeks and stuff. But what we're going to focus on is the Minoans who lived here and had outposts on all these islands. Anyways, here they are. Here's That's the Aegean. There's Crete. But here's the world they lived in, Egypt and all the different cultures of Mesopotamia and the Hittites, which were very much uh, <laughs> kind of a warring, uh, contentious group of nations for a long period of time. The the Bronze Age went from about 3000 to about BCE to about 12, 1200 BCE. So it was like a couple thousand years almost of, of a relatively you know steady civilization. What the Aegean part of it was in the middle was first Cycladic, which was a little more simple than the Minoans, but it was kind of elegant people that lived on the islands. And this is their artwork and we'll talk more about it. And then the Minoans, who their artwork was, I think, just a curiosity because of its um, kind of peaceful nature and kind of a positive take on everything. And then after them came the Mycenaeans. My nice, nice and you can see the difference between this, which is stereotypical, and this, which is also stereotypical. How many swords can you have and how many chariots and how can you kick, you know, somebody else's butt? Anyways, this is the Mycenaeans that we know about, which led to the classical Greek. So Aegean art is linked stylistically to... The Fertile Crescent, this whole area here, which had several different cultures, the Sumerians, Babylonians, Assyrians, etc. They're also linked to this area, which is the Hittites, but also to Egypt, right? Egypt, Egypt, right? And this is the Fertile Crescent. You've seen, heard that term in history classes a lot, right? And this was like the center of the universe for Western culture at the time. Because look at all these rivers, the Tigris and Euphrates, and then you had, you know, um, here was a, a kind of a land bridge, and then you had the Nile. Anyways, but they didn't get along too well. Sumer um, was notoriously kind of a top-down government style that, um, while it had a great advances, it also, um, there was a lot of violence involved. And the classical Greeks, which are the culmination of the, of the Greek kind of ancient history, and these gorgeous pots that you see, didn't happen until much later. This after this story. So... Um, what we want to learn about is how the Bronze Age came and went before that part of classical Greece. So what sets Aegeans apart, in the author's opinion, is its beauty and motion. I mean, look at these pictures. I mean, look at those women and how delicate, right? And there is a similarity to some Egyptian art that you'll see. But everything was about natural settings and... Um, I'm, I'm not going to go and answer all these questions. I'm going to let you do that if you want to kind of like get a bunch of the answers to your study guide from these. But the Cycladic art was this gorgeous. The main figure that they came up with was this, was this thing, which is a kind of a, almost a like a adolescent youth that was their symbol of grace and beauty. And then before that were all these other female figures, which were quite different, and they were much more maternal um, about childbearing and, and more heavy set and all that kind of stuff. But there's this is a huge swath of history that we've only learned about in the last 200 years. We didn't know anything about what they call pre, you know, ancient Europe, European history, and how most of it was matriarchal. It's, it's a, which has been a big secret. And then uh, the culture of... Um, the Minoan culture on Crete was also that. So anyways, here's some of the symbols of that. And what sculptures can tell us about the belief systems and structures is that perhaps it was, as I said, matriarchal. And here's some gold that was done, right? And women are always, almost always in, I want to let you kind of go through here and look because I don't want this to go on forever. And you can stop this thing. Well, you can't stop me right now. Um, what caused it to come to an end was kind of a perfect storm, but one of those elements of the perfect storm was a lot of earthquakes. And they say that Santorini, which you can go visit Santorini, and I have several times, um, this was all part of the island. 
And here, if you go, you'll go up on top here and you look out and you see this huge, you know, at right now, this, I was sitting right here taking this picture, looking down at this, but this whole thing is, was part of the island. So it gives you an idea. So it's called Santorini. Look it up, Google it, go to it someday. It's a pretty cool place to be, as are all those islands. Anyways, here's some of the architecture that was unique to the Minoans. And it was not big and flashy, but it was very livable and beautiful. And it was uh, meant to be things that everyone could enjoy. And they had a really unique columns that tapered up like that. Well, they, I guess you say tapered down. It was bigger on the top and smaller on the bottom. And the artwork that you can see, you can go to Nassos here. This is the town where, you could, where there's been a huge excavation. You can see much of what it was like. And also, you know, we're talking 3,000 to 1,200 BCE. And these people had extensive... Um, uh, extensively in engineered drainage and also flush toilets. Really, seriously. Um, big, huge open areas. So they planned everything about their culture so that it was for seemingly everyone. Um, there's no signs of like a real poor class. Um, there's no really wealthy people and really not really poor people. They did public roads. They built for the first time in recorded history anyways. They made roads that were cobbled. And here's an idea that some, you know, artists and, and archaeologists have, have come up with what, for example, Thera, excuse me, not Thera, but um, Akrotiri looked like. And some of the actual remnants and reconstructions that remain. Anyways. This wasn't flashy architecture. It wasn't huge and monumental like the Assyrians, Egyptians, the Persians, etc., who, whose architecture was about like you know showing the power of the state. Theirs was very human, and but it was also kind of for that reason there was all kinds of you know places where people could hang out and stuff, and they called it a labyrinth. And the Greeks, the later Greeks, um, called it you know a labyrinth. And there's a whole story about the Minotaur related to that, so you can find out about that. The huge thing. This is this is amazing. They lived there in the middle of this swimming pool, surrounded by a bunch of countries that um, that opened cans of whoop whoop butt on each other pretty routinely. There was constantly aggressive fighting, and they didn't take part in it. And they didn't even consider building this, which is what almost everybody at the time and since has done: building fortifications, like you think of a castle. The Minoans, anything they built, they did not build fortifications. It didn't occur to them, but why? It's, it's a big thousand dollar question, million dollar question. So what is it about this culture that they lived a life and they kind of stood apart? I think there's answers. I have my ideas, but I want you to try to figure it out too. Here's some more little things you can figure out that'll help you answer questions. But one of the references they think um, could be as far back as the Indus Valley of people that, that migrated up through the Mesopotamia and the Tigris Euphrates River Valley different, during different times, and then people that lived in, the, in what's now Turkey and then migrated out on the islands. That's one of a zillion options about where did these people come from that later became part of the Greek line of, you know, who are the Greeks. But you can see this because this looks very much like a you know, Mesopotamian uh, woman. Um, I mean, look at the elegance of these um, figures and <laughs> smart dressers. I mean, um, you look and you think, oh my gosh, look at the hemming on that and all, the, all that stuff, right? And the hairdressing. And they had an emblematic figure, which was their goddess. And it was a standing woman and it's done in many different ways. And she's holding two snakes and she has an owl of wisdom or something. I'm not sure exactly. Nobody knows, right? And she also has her breasts exposed and that evidently was something that was common. It wasn't a big deal. If you've ever been to Greece, out on the islands anyways, it still tends to be something that goes on. But um, the, the snakes weren't um, what one would think. They weren't evil or anything. They were um, representations of male fertility as a juxtaposition to the female um, energy kind of thing. Anyways, that's what people have come up with. There, this is all a big mystery, so you can come up with what you think, but it's really a curious culture. So anyways, um, the largely fragments. Look at all these things that are found, many of which I saw. All the artwork are these beautiful renditions of nature and things that they saw and what was around them and what they cared about. Nature, birds, and animals, 
um, that's what they chose to depict and think about other cultures at the time and since and before and it's all about usually about conquering and you know who was victorious over so and so in a battle that didn't occur to them they showed their their daily lives and the beauty around them and we're not talking about a couple years we're talking about almost 2,000 years of this continuously again this is a culture that you might not have ever heard about it before because we as, as in history they've only known about this culture for a couple hundred years it was buried and nobody really knew it existed so it's new to history to talk about the Minoan culture and how it affected Greek culture and how it affected the Bronze Age anyways daily life you know women just going about their days I, I fantasize about what how it might have been to live in this kind of culture it might have been a lot of fun um, the men, I think, were out sailing and doing adventurous stuff, and the women were too, as you'll see in a minute. There was no seemingly delineation between that's a woman's job and that's a man's job. And um, there was, women were in power, women made decisions, and this was unheard of. This is like, nobody did that, and that was just a natural part of what they did. So anyways, here's some of the things, it's a ritual painting. Some people think it might be a prince, but they didn't really do any monuments to princes or anybody else. That was something they didn't do. You don't see this like, this was King so-and-so or Queen so-and-so. Nope, they can't find any of it. But you can see the sort of remnants of what, how it might be references to Egypt and the way Egyptians also did their artwork. There was some sport like this, which you might say, well, that's violence. Okay, two young kids learning how to box. And then runners and this thing, which is this amazing sport of bull leaping which i'm gonna let you find out about but it was not only done by men it was their big spectator sport the men are coated by being a little bit more reddish and the women are lighter and so this was done by teams of both men and women and there's a woman actually doing the the deal anyways that's <laughs> when you look at the context of this culture and what was going on all around for so long and you realize how dramatically and obviously, they just avoided confrontation. They avoided uh, all the intrigues of the time like this. Yeah, that's the Mycenaeans who took them over, over after them. First thing they were doing is making huge swords. All their artwork was about that kind of stuff. They built fortifications because they were worried. And the world had changed, and the Mycenaeans were worried. If you want to see a movie that completely de depicts the world of the Mycenaeans, look at the movie Troy with Brad Pitt. And it shows the Iliad illustrated, which is one of the oldest stories of the ancient Greeks. And it, the king of that story came from this town, which is Mycenae. And all of the references are they still paid homage to the Minoans, but they weren't Minoans. They had overtaken the Minoans and absorbed them, but it was different. So anyways, I'm going to let you... I think one of the things that might have been the downfall, not only the perfect storm, there was huge upheaval but there was groups of people throughout the far east not the far east but the middle east that the egyptians wanted to deal with and the egyptians as a rule would hire um mercenaries and specifically they hired the the, the mycenaeans to come and deal with them and you know kill them basically or or make them go somewhere else and here's some of the specifics about that and some of the artifacts that, you know, show that. This is King Agamemnon, who was the king represented in the movie Troy. Um, but the Minoans were renowned. They weren't soldiers, but they were renowned sailors. And it's, it's thought through records that they helped portage these mercenaries. And that might, you know, you say it's a win-win situation, but it might have been, in some ways, perhaps, the beginning of the end um, as far as politically. But there's so much else with the environment, with rampant poverty, with um, starvation that happened right before and around 1200, everything came to an end. And about 1200, you didn't find any city in that swimming pool all the way around um, that was still standing. It was, it, then it was a complete dark age. And it was quite a long time before we had what we consider to be the burgeoning of classical Greek culture. What a story, right? What a mystery. We don't know, but I think it's fun for you to figure out. All right, that's my two cents.